Apartheid era assassin Eugene de Kock will ask the North Gauteng High Court to set aside his parole refusal. In August, Justice and Correctional Services Minister Michael Masuta said he would have to wait another year before his application for parole was reconsidered. But he now wants the court to speed up the process. Reporter Karen Mon is tracking the story for ENCA and is joining us now live from outside the North Gauteng High Court in Pretoria. Karen, uh, good morning. Yet another uh, uh, attempt by Eugene Tikok regarding his parole. He doesn't want to wait for another year. He wants the refusal to be set aside. Well, remember his contention is that he became eligible for parole after serving 13 years and four months of his sentence. Remember, he was sentenced for six murders, uh, well, five murder charges and one conspiracy to commit murder charge, um, and sentenced to two life terms and four uh, sentences of 20 years in prison. And his contention is that he became eligible for parole um, after serving 13 years, four months. He applied for parole in November 2011. That was refused. Um, Subsequently, he went to court to compel then Minister uh, of Correctional Services, Sabu and Debele, to make a decision on his parole application after the National Council of the, the Parole Board strongly recommended or recommended, Dan, that he actually be given parole in November last year. Of course, Judge Tokazile Masipa agreeing that that was a reasonable request to make, compelling the Minister of Justice and Correctional Services, Michael Masuta, to make that decision, and he ultimately uh, turned Eugene de Kock down. Interestingly enough, however, in the court papers that are currently before the court, the heads of argument, it's emerged that according to Eugene de Kock, uh, the uh, minister, Sabu and Debele's lawyers, agreed that he would be granted parole and given parole approval uh, on or after May 12th this year. He says he had a reasonable expectation as part of settlement negotiations that occurred between his lawyers and lawyers for the minister that he would be granted for parole, uh, granted parole, and this expectation was denied. However, lawyers for government saying that these were part of privileged settlement negotiations and they really have nothing to do with Michael Masuta's decision to revoke or to not grant uh, Eugene de Kock parole. Now, Karen, I mean, the last times when this parole issue has come up, we've seen the issues of families of those who fell victim to Eugene Cox's assassinations and uh, at the time during apartheid days coming up and saying some of them, they want him to get parole, some of them saying they don't want him to get parole. Does that factor come into play in today's court hearing at all? I am so glad you asked that question because it's one of the linchpin points in this case. Essentially what's happening is Eugene de Kock is saying, look, uh, there's no legal, uh, d you know, basis for saying that there needs to be victim and offender dialogue. Yes, the victim's fam families need to be consulted. They do have the right to make representations to the parole board. But you can't say, as Minister Michael Masuta did, that because the families hadn't been properly consulted or there wasn't a victim and offender dialogue, that he couldn't uh, rubber stamp or agree to parole being granted to Eugene de Kock. Eugene de Kock saying, through his lawyers, very, very unfair. However, government saying that even though it's not, look, the right of the, the victim's families to be consulted is, is legally enshrined, but even though victim and offender dialogue is not legally mandated, the minister has a discretion, given the very sensitive nature of this case, to ask that that kind of thing happen and to make the kind of decision that he did, to, to delay this for 12 months so there could be some kind of dialogue, there could be greater consultation. So you've really identified one of the big issues here and one of the cases that's come up again and again in the court papers for this particular case is of course uh, the matter that uh, Chris Harney's widow brought where she demanded that she be consulted on the issue of parole for uh, Clive Darby Lewis and Janusz Wolosz so that is going to be a linchpin issue in the argument today. Thank you very much. Uh, that's our reporter Karen Mon at the North Gauteng High Court in Pretoria.